All right, so in this video, we want to understand the idea of finding terminal points of an angle. But before we get to it, let's, let's try to understand a few ideas and then we can talk about terminal points. So first thing we want to understand is the unit circle. So if you remember, so suppose we have a unit circle um, right here. And so the equation of the circle is x squared uh, equals to 1. So, um, so the distance from the center to the end point of the circle is 1. So that means um, this point right here can be labeled, let's call it a point P, and this has coordinates. The x coordinate is 1, y coordinate is 0. Then as we go counterclockwise, we have this point which is labeled x coordinate 0, y coordinate 1. And then this point, x is negative 1, y is 0. And this point, we have 0, negative 1. And then back to the point 1, comma 0. So those are the uh, quadrantal points on the unit circle. Now, we also know that a point on the unit circle, x, comma, y, is also written as cosine of theta and sine of theta. So what that means is your x coordinate will correspond to cosine of that given angle and the y coordinate will be sine of that given angle. So let's see how this is useful. So if we want to find the terminal point, point that is determined by the angle, say so theta equals to zero degree, we would be looking at this point right here, and then we would know this point is given by x comma y, and our x coordinate will correspond to cosine of that angle, which is zero degree or zero radian, and sine of that angle. And from the point, we see that our cosine value is one, and our sine value is zero. So there you have your terminal point for zero degree, because zero degree terminates right there. That's the angle. Now, um, there are a few other angles that you should also know before we get to um, more um, questions on finding terminal angles, are these um, three special angles. So for instance, you should know that 30 degree is right here. So that's 30 degree. Now let's call this 45 degree. And then let's call this 60 degree. So these are the special angles and you should know what are their terminal points. This one, so since this is a 30 degree, we know this point will be determined by cosine of 30 and the y coordinate will be sine of 30. Now you should also know that the cosine of 30 degree is going to be a square root of 3 over 2 and then sine of 30 is 1 half. So that will be the terminal point if the angle is 30 degree. Now what about for 45 degree? What's the terminal point? Well, so we're looking at this one. So this one will be given by cosine of 45 and sine 45. And um, so I ran out of space, um, but I'm just gonna pull it right here. Uh, so that would be given by cosine 45 is root two over two, and sine 45 is root two over two. So that will be the terminal point for 45 degree angle. And lastly, you should also know uh, 60 degree, let's call this angle is 60 degree. So we wanna know that point. So this point will be determined by cosine 60 comma sine 60. And you should know from memory, cosine 60 is one half and sine 60 is radical three over two. So these are the three important angles that we often memorize, but it's good to understand them along with the other angles we have on the unit circle. All right, so now that we have known this a little bit, let's talk about a few examples. 
Okay, so here's our first example. We want to find the terminal point on the unit circle determined by this angle right here. So you want to draw the angle and see where it's located on the unit circle. So um, if I draw the xy plane, so this is zero degree. As I travel, this is 90 degree, which is pi over two in radians. And then as I keep traveling counterclockwise, that is pi, which is 180 degree. And then as you travel 90 degree more, you're at three pi over two, which is 270 degree. So that's the terminal point we're looking at on the unit circle. Now, if you recall, this point on the unit circle is given by zero comma negative one. So therefore, the terminal point x comma y of three pi over two is zero negative one. That will be our terminal point determined by the angle three pi over two. All right, so let's try another example. Okay, so for this example, now it looks like the angle is not one of the quadrantal angles. So the quadrantal angles are zero, zero, 90, 180, 270, 360. That's for the first revolution and then you have the rotation of these. So, um, so first thing you wanna do is just rewrite the angle until you know how to sketch it. So we're going to rewrite seven pi over six. So seven pi over six, well, six will divide seven one time with the remainder. So we have six pi over six plus a pi over six, that'll be seven pi over six. And then six over six will cancel out. You have pi plus pi over six. So we're going to draw this angle. So this angle is going to terminate Let's see where. So here is pi. And then pi over six, that's a 30 degree. So it's just a little bit right here. So we're looking for that point right there. So this is our angle seven pi over six. Now, of course, it's not one of the angle that we know, 30, 45, and 60. That means we need to find out its reference angle. So that way we know its terminal points. So let's go ahead and find its reference angle. So we are going to use the rule on the third quadrant. So um, the reference angle is going to be this angle right here. So that is your reference angle. So I have a video on reference angle. So if you need to review that a little bit, feel free to watch that as well. So uh, reference angle is going to be theta minus pi. So in this case, our theta is seven pi over six take away pi, that would be just pi over six. So there you go. So the reference angle is pi over six. So that means this point is going to be p of x comma y. And we know that's gonna be given by um, p of cosine and sine. But keep in mind, because you're on the third quadrant, your x is negative, your y is also negative. So our point is gonna be negative cosine of pi over six and negative sine of pi over six because we're on the third quadrant. So now from memory, we know cosine of pi over six, that's going to be um, negative square root of three over two and then sine of negative pi over six was going to be one half. So that is our terminal point for the angle seven pi over six. All right, um, so let's, let's do another example. All right, so, um, so here's our next example. We want to find the terminal point on the unit circle determined by this angle. So again, you want to um, draw the angle and then figure out where it's located, or because it's negative, you can find its coterminal angle. So in order to find the coterminal angle, we're going to add two pi to it. So coterminal angle. So the reason we're looking for the coterminal is because the angle is negative. Another reason could be if the angle is bigger than two pi, then you would look at the coterminal. So in this case, to bring this angle within zero to, so we want alpha 
to be between 0 and 2 pi. So I'm going to add 2 pi to bring it within that restriction. So negative 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi. So that would give us, again, you want to use common denominator. So multiply this by 3 over 3. That would be negative 4 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3, which would give us 2 pi over 3. All right, so that's our coterminal angle. So now we're going to sketch this. What's 2 pi over 3? So let's sketch this. So in order for me to sketch, I'm going to rewrite so that I know how to measure this angle. So 2 pi can be written as pi over 3 plus pi over 3. So pi over 3 is a 60 degrees, so 60 plus 60, that's 120. So we know the angle is located on the second quadrant. So here is 2 pi over 3. And we're looking for this point right here. It's 2 pi over 3. Now because it's beyond first quadrant, we need to find the reference angle. So the reference angle on the second quadrant, we're going to determine using this rule. So this is the reference angle. That's going to be pi minus theta. Our theta is 2 pi over 3, so that will be pi minus 2 pi over 3, which would give us just pi over 3. All right, so that means this point is going to determine, so let me, again, I'm running out of space, uh, but just bear with me. So this point is going to be determined by x comma y and because you're on the second quadrant your x direction is negative y direction is positive so this would be p of negative cosine of the reference angle pi over 3 and the y coordinate is positive so it's sine of pi over 3 and we know cosine of pi over 3 is my negative 1 half because of the quadrant and sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. So there you have your terminal point for the angle uh, alpha equals negative 4 pi over 3. All right, so, uh, so this is it for this video. I hope this helps.